In this episode, we're going to rebuild the front and rear axles in the Land Cruiser. I'm going to replace all the bearings and seals. I'm going to rebuild the steering knuckles. We're going to install 488 gears, front and rear of course. And I'm going to install an e-locker in the front axle. So the reason I've decided to take this on is because there's a, a whining or a whirring kind of howling noise in the front axle when I'm driving highway speeds. This is most likely because bearings are worn out. The truck has 340,000 miles on it and it doesn't surprise me if that needs to be replaced by now. So while I'm in there, that's uh, replacing bearings, that's a good time to go ahead and do the gears, which I need to do anyway because I've got oversized tires. And if I've got all that apart, I might as well install the locker if I was gonna do a locker. So I've decided to do an e-locker. That's what uh, a lot of cruiser guys are recommending. And so uh, that's, that's my choice as well. So there are other YouTube videos out there on how to install gears and, and uh, rebuild your differentials. And I'm not an expert. This is my first time doing this. If you're gonna take on this project, you should watch some experts do it and tell you how to do it. But what I'm going to offer you in this video is what is it like for a regular guy to tackle this. And so I'll show you some of the hiccups or the problems or the challenges that I experience along the way so that you could be more informed. As well as I'm going to show you what, uh, what items you need to purchase in order to do it. As well as some tools you might need to acquire in order to do it the right way. By the end of the video, you should have a good idea of how you can prepare and what to prepare for if you're gonna take on this kind of a project yourself. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the parts that I've acquired to do this. Uh, there may be more I need along the way, we'll find out, but I'm hoping this is it. So we'll start from the middle and work our way out. I bought an e-locker. Uh, I did some research and this is the what I decided to go ahead and buy for the front differential. And I've got the ring and pinion for both front and rear axles. Then bought a master set which comes with new bearings and seals. And uh, for the front here, it came with new bolts for the ring. Um, however, for the rear, it didn't come with those. So I need to do some research to figure out if I need to buy those or if it's okay for me to reuse uh, the old bolts. Uh, so I've got both of those kits. Also what they recommended to me is that I needed to buy a new flange kit for the front. So this comes with uh, the, fr the flange that goes on the rear side of the differential and connects to the drive shaft. That's because this one is 29 spline and I, I believe the stock one is 30. And for whatever reason I needed to change this in order to fit with the new pinion. On the rear, I realized if I'm taking everything apart, I need to get new bearings and seals for the rest of the axle. And so I got those and it came with a gasket for the, the differential cover. I'm also rebuilding the steering knuckles. And so this is a rebuild kit that I bought. It comes with seals and bearings. And it also comes with more seals and the wiper kit for the uh, for the steering knuckles as well. I don't know if I need to replace my burr fields. We're going to find out as I take it apart and I'll kind of inspect those and see if they're in good shape or not. So I'm hoping this is everything I need and uh, I'll let you know if I realize I needed to purchase something else. Suppose I could take this one off so that it drains easier. That's better.
So you can see that this nut is all tore up and gouged. This is because the a previous owner did not have the 54 millimeter socket that you're supposed to have and instead they just used a screwdriver to pound it around. So now I've got to deal with that. So I'm going to see if I can file this uh, smooth and clean it up before I reuse it. So I tapped on this a bit with a brass hammer and uh, and then a little pry with a screwdriver because it was sealed and uh, anyway now it pulls out. So there's the spindle. That, that uh, grease looks dirty to me. And some kind of little collar. And that's the berf and the axle. And I'll pull that out in a second. So there's flat spots. Somehow, there's a flat spot. You're supposed to be able to rotate it, but I have it in gear, so that's a problem. Hmm, just a minute. Okay, let's try it now. Let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. Way easier. Okay, so you put the flats on top and bottom, and then it comes out. dirt in there. Gosh. Okay, so this one is disassembled and I need to get all these parts cleaned up for the reassembly with all the new bearings and seals. But now I'm going to go do the other side and, uh, and then we'll get into the differential itself. got both steering knuckles disassembled and the third member or the differential pulled out and so now I'm going to go over some of the things that I learned in this process. The source of most of my problems so far is that this vehicle has had previous owners. We bought it at 325,000 miles and now it's got almost 340. So we don't know what previous owners did in those 325,000 miles. But I do know that they tackled some of the steering knuckles and the, even the differential because there's a lot of extra sealant squirting out where there shouldn't be sealant, it should be gaskets. Let me show you what I mean. So when I removed this hub piece here, there's all this red sealant that they used and they should have used a gasket like this. So make sure your kit that you buy for your knuckle rebuild has this gasket. You do not want this sealant squirting into your bearings and everywhere. It just makes a mess and I'm sure it's not good for what's going on inside there. This is the spindle piece 
and I've got it cleaned up now but there was a lot of this black RTV that they used for the sealant but there's a gasket for this and that you want to make sure that your rebuild kit has that gasket I found a bunch of these nuggets of black RTV that were squirted through the spindle bolt holes and they were floating around inside the steering knuckles I'm sure that's not good for what's supposed to happen in there and that's a good reason to not use this when you're putting your steering knuckles back together I also found a lot of this on the differential now I don't see in any of my kits uh, a gasket for this so I need to look into that and see and acquire this gasket before I put things back together uh, the previous owner used this black RTV and it was squirting out and I found it caked up inside it looks like it stayed on the perimeter it wasn't in the gears uh, but it definitely was working its way in there and that's that can't be good though on my passenger side inside of here I don't know if you can see this I'm gonna try not to make any shadows but there's some nicks in here this is right behind where this the axle seal goes and I don't know if that's gonna affect the seal or not but I don't like there's some burrs on there and I don't like that so I'm gonna to have to get in there and file that very carefully I don't know how that happened it wasn't from me but uh, probably what I'll do is I'll shove a rag inside the hole here to keep any sh metal shavings from getting inside the axle tube then I'll file this really carefully and uh, and then clean it up and make sure there's no shavings in here at all so these are my axles and burr fields and look at this on both of them they've got these kind of blue circles where each bearing is which means the bearings were getting really hot and turned the steel that blue color I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that if you look at the grease that was inside of here it's very black and burnt so I'm afraid these are probably going to need to be replaced I wasn't planning on doing that but I don't really want to put that back together in there the other thing is on the outside here on this spline this is really chewed up I don't know if you can see that very well in the camera but it's just deformed it doesn't look good and so that's another reason that I need to replace the burr fields here I'm looking on the axle side of the spindle and they don't look perfect, but um, they look, do look better. I've got more confidence in them. So I, I'm thinking I can reuse the axles, but not these burr fields. Mostly because I'm going to need to replace these bearings in here, I think. If they got that hot, I'm afraid they're not in good shape. The other thing is that this one doesn't want to move very well. You kind of got to give it a good tap to get it to to get it to move it kind of sticks I don't like that so it's pretty hard to see in here but this is where the end of that burr field the spline fits into this hub piece and this is looking pretty deformed as well so I'm gonna to have to replace that also depending on how expensive they are I might just replace the other side as well even though that one doesn't look as bad another afterthought that I have and I'll pass it on to you as a tip is the differential here the axle is really dirty and so when I pulled the third member out a lot of dust and stuff from up here on top fell onto the gears and I mean it's not like I can't clean it and honestly I'm getting rid of most of what's in there because I'm replacing it with a, a locker and new everything so uh, I'm not too worried about it but if you were doing this maybe just to put bearings in and you were going to keep all your gears obviously you'd want to avoid getting that dirt and dust in there so I would suggest brushing and cleaning the outside of this area before you pull that third member out okay so I'm going to start disassembling the differential and I made this bracket to hold it in my vise and I drilled a hole here to mount through one of the differential bolt holes and I welded this 
on the top so that I can flip the whole thing over and stick it back in the vise and work on the pinion side. And anyway, we'll see if this works for me. I've never used this before, just made it for this kind of an experiment. I'm thinking that when I get to the rear differential, I can just bring it out here further. The rear is bigger, of course, so maybe I can just drill holes out here and be able to mount it out further. That's why I have this kind of angled design. Anyway, we'll see if it works. In the meantime, let's take this apart. for the outer pinion bearing and you can see below it there is what's called a re an oil retainer and it's like a it's a ring that is installed before the race in order for me to pound the race out I got to pound from the other side but it's going to tear up that oil retainer in the process so it means I need a new oil retainer to put in and that did not come in my kit so that's a bummer. I got to order that. Okay, so the oil retainer and the outer bearing race sit like this inside of there. And so what I did is from the bottom, I bent up the oil retainer so I could see the lip of the race. And then I hit that with the brass punch until the race pops out. And then you can just tap the oil retainer and it comes out afterwards. That seemed the, to be the easiest way for me. I'm going to press the pinion bearing, the out, the uh, inner bearing, with the old inner bearing inner race because they're the same size. So I used a Dremel to, to Dremel this out so that it won't stick on the pinion shaft uh, while it's pressing it. I needed to purchase because the new pinion flange on the front is a 29 spline whereas the original was a 27 spline the oil slinger doesn't fit over the new pinion because um, this is too small so I had to order a larger one for the 29 spline pinion also this is the washer that goes on over the pinion flange and it's also too small because the shaft is bigger. So I was able to find this at a local uh, auto parts store. This is 20 millimeter and this is 22 millimeters and it fits over the new pinion flange. So because the old oil slinger doesn't fit the new 29 spline pinion, I ordered another one that I found on the Yukon website and there wasn't very much description about what size it was but it has 29 in the model number. So I took a gamble and I got
got it and alas it is the exact same size hole it won't fit the 29 spline pinion so I think what I have to do uh, Marlin crawler said I just have to bore it out so I'm going to uh, I'm going to match it up next to the other uh, flat washer kind of oil slinger that I have and which has the right hole and I'm going to dremel this out to the same size. Hey, what you cooking? Ring gear. The e-locker is basically ready. I've got the ring gear on there and I've got the new bearings pressed on each side But I'm having trouble. You can see how the bearing cap fits over the top on this side But on this side here It won't fit on there. Hold on. Let me grab this real quick It won't fit over the top because it runs into these two tabs that are welded to the electromagnet these are there so that when the differential spins, the electromagnet does not. They kind of hug the, the uh, bearing cap there like this, but they seem too narrow. They don't allow the bearing cap to slid over it. You can see here, it hits. On this side here, it hits. So now I've got to figure out what to do about this. I'm going to have to do some research. Okay, so I've took it off because I think that my pattern is just a little bit high on the tooth and I think that means I need to set my pinion depth just a little closer so I gotta stick a little shim in there I mean this might be good enough but I'll never know unless I try the other option so I think I gotta put a shim in there see what happens So in this kit, they don't send a crush sleeve like on the old pinion. And instead they send this shim sleeve. I don't know what to call it. Uh, you put this in and then you add shims until it's the right 
height. You put it on the on the pinion like that. Anyway, in, in my circumstance here, I've got that oil retainer ring, which is right in the way of this. Uh, as you can see, if I push it up in there, it touches it, and it's too big to go through it. Uh, which means that the main bearing here on the pinion doesn't make contact with the race. So I had to spend some time grinding it and changing the shape of it uh, so that it will fit in there. And I think I've got it right, but uh, for those of you who are looking into a kit like this, be prepared for that or buy a separate crush sleeve and do it that way. Apparently these are stronger and last longer, so I'm going to use it, but I sure am having to mess with it. All right, I've got everything in the front diff put back together and torqued down and everything's like I think it should be. So I'm going to put it back in the truck now and we can put the front end back together. Okay, I'm going to do a dry fit before I get all my sticky sealant on there, just to make sure everything fits beforehand. This is the heavy part. The adjusters are hitting the, the adjusters stick out a little wider with the locker in there. And that's what I, oh, here we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, let's uh, get a gasket on there. Okay, so the kit that I bought comes with this uh, sealant for the main gasket. and But of course, the OEM thing is to get an actual gasket. And they were willing to send me one, um, but I, I ended up just buying it from Spectre Off-Road just to get it quick. And so I'm actually thinking I might spread some of this on that and just... Maybe it's unnecessary, but just kind of double up the ceiling power. I guess I should say, my only problem with this kind of gasket maker is that if it oozes inside the diff, it could be a problem in there. You know, if you have chunks of this stuff floating around inside the differential, I don't know, that could be a bad thing. So that's why I lean towards this with maybe a little bit of this around the bolt holes or, or a thin layer around the perimeter. Okay, I'm going to put the drive shaft back on now. Ouch. There's all these different holes to choose from now. Um, so, I'm going to figure out what pattern mine is. And I think my bolts only fit in the middle, the medium one. 
too loose for the big one, too big for the little one. So they're the medium one. And uh, this is, they're not a square. It's a rectangle, the, the bolt pattern is. So you gotta make sure you turn it the right way. fields and drive flanges and I'm getting ready to uh, set them up but you can just see how how much cleaner that is uh, than the old one and these have teeth on them that's good uh, make sure that you get these they they came with my new burr fields and this is what locks in the axle you need to put new ones on so that the axle isn't loose in there.
Okay, so I drained the oil already. Or it's draining right now, I should say. And But I gotta loosen these items here. I did spray some stuff on them earlier, but I don't know one time, but I don't, we'll see here. Cool. That's good. Very good. I was a little nervous about those. that up out of our way and this is supposed to pop loose here there we go move that aside we'll just kind of dodge that and now we got these Get a extension. Brake cable is definitely kind of in the way. Kind of stretch that cable, maybe. There's a washer on the back of that, don't want to lose that. I'm going to keep each washer with the gear just in case they're kind of specific in size. I'm going to move my lid too. Push the axle. 
axle from that side. Oh, and the C clip just comes right out. C clip. And push this axle. clip this does. screwdriver or something. Now, experience tells me this is going to be heavy. Okay. I got it. Now I got to get it out of here. Okay, so I put the spider gears and the spacer and the pin and all that back together so that the middle of this carrier is all in place and ready to go and then I'm going to take it apart because I'm going to get rid of this ring and the pinion and we're going to replace those obviously to 488s um, but I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to keep um, everything labeled and separated uh, this side and this side <laughs> Thank you. 
spider gears out because those pins are in the way. Darn. Now, that's basically going to be impossible to remove. Friggin' retarded. So the only way to get the ring gear off is if this pin isn't there, but you can't get the pin out if the ring gear isn't seated all the way. So that's a problem. Sweet. Okay, so we're gonna put this back down a little ways. I'm gonna try and keep all that from falling apart in there somehow by flipping this over very carefully put this up here the spacer that's in there wants to fall out okay now I can hammer this down again And then I'm going to, well, shoot, I guess I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put it back together because i got to put the new ring gear back on. So I guess I'm taking this apart again. That was easy. Well, here's something they don't tell you in the YouTubes, at least the ones that I found. When you're reusing the original carrier in a semi-floating rear axle, which is what I have on the 91 Land Cruiser, you have to be able to take this carrier pin out in order to get slide the axles in uh, when, it, when it's all in the truck, in order to slide the axles in and get the C-clips on the axle ends. So this has to be able to get removed. Well, with new gears, the gear is taller and the teeth actually get in the way of being able to put this in or take it out. So I found some information on the internet finding that I actually have to grind a couple of these teeth to make room. One of those, uh, one of those pieces of information was actually a, a Yukon video on YouTube telling you that you have to do this. So I felt like that made it official. I mean, that's who made the gears, and they're the ones saying, this is what you got to do. This is the right way to do it. So that made me feel a little safer about it. So I rotated this gear uh, until I found a position where the bolt holes lined up, of course, and the least amount of tooth needed to be ground off uh, in order to line the pin up with that hole. So I found that if I lined it up with um, the edge of two teeth, there was the least amount of tooth removal uh, to be able to do it and I felt most comfortable with that. So 
So one thing I've done to prepare for putting the bearings on the pinion shaft is I took the old bearing and I took the inner race. I just used a grinder to get the cage off of there and get the old bearings off and just have the inner race. And then I used a die grinder to, uh, to bore it out inside so that it's just a hair bigger than the new bearing. That way when the new bearing goes over the shaft here and there's a little bit of shaft still sticking up out of the top of this bearing and this will allow me to push that bearing on but not stick on the shaft. So I've done that on the front and the rear pinions. I'm not using the washer on this because this is a flange nut, which means it's kind of like a built-in washer, sort of. Um, and when I tighten it all the way down, the pinion sticks out just enough. If I had a washer in there, it, not all the threads would be grabbing. So this seems more right to me. Okay, so uh, this says about 15 inch-pounds. The uh, factory service manual says you want between like 11 and 17, so that means it's perfect there. But the uh, Yukon instructions say um, you want like 8 to 11. Uh, so it's actually a little high for that. Um, I'm going to leave it here just for what we're doing. When we set it in the very end, I'll, I'll probably go... Um, more like the Yukon instructions because they're the ones that sold me the bearings um, but I think we're okay for setting up the backlash I don't know why this is so difficult. The uh, the front the front diff is way easier. about six. It's supposed to be between six and eight, so I'm gonna stick with that. So I figured out what that tiny little toothpaste tube was in the setup kit. It's the yellow paint for gear marking. And great.
So when you're looking at the teeth here, you want to look at where the paint is rubbed off. And you can see on the drive side here, it's much towards the top of the tooth, not centered. And on the coast side, it's also more towards the top of the tooth. So we need to move the pinion in, I believe. I'll look at some cheat sheets, and but I believe I moved the pinion in. It means that I need to add some shims, and uh, we'll see what it does the next time around. This is 0 0.0185. That's what I added. Okay, so this is with my 08, excuse me, 0185 shim. And I'm having a hard time deciding, but it looks like on the coast side here, there's kind of a line at the bottom of that. It makes me feel like it's might be a little too deep. We look on the drive side, even more dramatic. There's like a line on the bottom. I don't feel like the... It needs to be more of an oval shape. That's almost like triangular. I think that means I went too deep, too much shim. So I need to find it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so my first try was with the stock shim plus no shim. And I was high on the tooth. On the face, that is. The next one I did was I uh, added a shim that was 0 0.0185, and it was it seemed really low, and towards the toe, like it was touching the toe of the teeth. So I did one right in the middle, 0 0.0090, and I'm liking the way it looks. So here's the coast side, and or actually this is the drive side. It seems really centered to me. It's not contacting the toe any longer and not contacting the face any longer, the top that is. On the coast side, it's also centered. And uh, I think that's I think that's the one. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can move on to the pinion spacer. Okay, so I put the seal in there. And now I'm going to do the pinion and the crush sleeve. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit of, just a little bit of drag now. I'm sure it's not enough, but I'll go ahead and do this. Yeah, it's like two. It's about nine, eight or nine. So this is saying it should be between eight and 11. And this says it should be between 11 and 17. So we're gonna shoot for 11. Because that's where they both meet. Oh. Let's get it to spin. Uh, it might be ten. Might be at 11, close to 11. I'd 
see this is like nine or ten this way. I don't know if you're supposed to measure it both ways. That's like ten. So it that's within the uh Yukon specs. I kinda like a little more just because that's what the factory service manual says. So let's just give it a little bump. like 11 that's probably 10 ish that way and this way we're looking at 11 so I think that's what we want right there So you got about 20 there. All right, that's about seven and a half. Okay, I'm actually going to redo the preload because I moved it so far. Alright, that's six. Which is what I want. Okay, I tested it for the pattern again, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. And so I'm going to start uh, tightening everything up, torquing them down, and putting Loctite on them, and, and we're going to be done with this.
so this is the rear and it's looking pretty good I don't see any leaks uh, when I filled it it did leak um, and I found that the the seal that was back here did not fit my pinion flange so there was no seal there so without even driving it just leaked out so I had to reinstall a different seal I'll, I'll show you which one so in my rear pinion setup kit uh, or gear setup kit it came with two different pinion seals I first put in the one that was it's like coated in this kind of plasticky black plasticky rubber stuff all around it so I used that one first and it didn't it didn't seal around my pinion so there was another one just like this in there and I put this one in and that has sealed I don't know why it's possible that the spring in here on the other one broke and so it wasn't pinching a good seal or maybe it's slightly different and it only fits certain pinions I don't know this one worked on the front pinion I'm not really sure which seal I used I can't remember but I have this one left over so maybe it was the other one and anyway it seems sealed okay so I've got everything plugged back in and got gear oil in the diffs and it's time for a test drive I'm kind of excited about this and also a little bit nervous so I'm backing out of the garage now and I don't hear any grinding or anything that's good So just set the trip timer to zero because we are supposed to break in these gears. I'm supposed to put a certain amount of miles on them, so 500 miles before I change the diff oil. So we're 